In this key area, we're going to be looking at cellular respiration. And that is just as a quick reminder for part of what you know already is that respiration involves the breakdown of glucose. In that breakdown of glucose, ATP is produced. We'll have a look at some of the other things that are produced in that as well as the reaction happens. But on this video here, we're going to be concentrating on the ATP and the role of ATP. Now, so just a quick recap to make sure that you remember this. When glucose is broken down, it releases the energy which is used to make the ATP. And ATP is made by the joining of an adenosine diphosphate molecule, ADP, plus an inorganic phosphate model, uh, molecule. And when it's formed, you've got this bond here that can be broken. Uh, this is the end phosphate bond. It contains lots of energy and the energy is released when this is broken and ADP and inorganic phosphate are formed. So when this bond here is broken, it can be used by cells to carry out anabolic reactions. That is um, synthesis reactions. And ATP is, it's essential in biological systems. It's the link between reactions that release energy, remember catabolic reactions, and those that use energy, that is anabolic reactions. So when we are talking about ATP, its role is to, it's really involved in, I've got it up here as an energy currency. Well, it's involved in the transfer of energy to pathways and cellular processes where energy is required. And if we're thinking of the ATP, the energy is stored in the ATP, we can think of the ATP as an energy currency, but please don't know, use those words in a SQE exam. ATP is spent during cellular work. So things like muscle contractions or the synthesis of proteins and it's stored when glucose is broken down during respiration. So we get this link being um, made where we've got ATP when ATP, we've got simple molecules here and we've got ATP and when the ATP is broken down to adenosine diphosphate and for inorganic phosphate, we're using up energy to synthesize, uh, this is a th synthetic pathway. And we use the ATP in that we break the bond and we release the energy. We've also got our energy releasing actions, that is our respiration where glucose is broken down and in that process, ATP is formed. So you need to have this idea then in your head where there's the link with this and this concept that the ATP is transferring the energy to pathways that need it. There's another role that ATP has and that is it's involved in something called a phosphorylation reaction. And I've just got that means just adding phosphates to things. It's an enzyme control process. So we've got an example here during glycolysis, ATP is broken down to ADP and inorganic phosphate. And the phosphate group is used to phosphorylate the substrate of glycolysis. So here we've got our glucose, we've got ATP being broken down to ADP and inorganic phosphate. And what that does is it phosphorylates the glucose it adds a phosphate group to the glucose here. Um, and we talk about the first stage of respiration having an energy investment stage. And this is the energy investment stage that we're talking about. In actual fact, two ATP are used up in glycolysis. So that's investing the energy into it. But in that process, four ATP are formed. And we'll talk about that 
in our glycolysis video as well. So overall, we gain two ATP molecules from glycolysis, but we've had to invest these two first of all, and they're involved in phosphorylating the glucose molecule. A ATP phosphorylates other molecules and that phosphorylation process or that adding of the phosphate group can result in a pathway being a cascaded or a, a, a pathway being followed. But you don't need to know an awful lot of detail about anything else really about phosphorylation, just this concept. And that is the end of this very short ATP video.